And so the news train with regard to Gran Turismo 7 shows no signs of slowing down just yet, because now we have, as many of you know by this point, of course, the availability to pre-order Gran Turismo 7. Now, this is available both in physical and digital pre-order forms. And even though thoughts can be mixed as to which one you prefer, do you still prefer to have a disc, etc., I will say that there are some clear advantages to pre-ordering a digital version over pre-ordering a physical one. In fact, I very rarely, if ever, pre-order physical discs, because in the past when I have tried to do so, I believe I actually did so with the Steelbook of Forza 7 or something like that, you still end up having to wait just as long as anyone else, and sometimes you don't even end up getting a copy that you're supposed to, so it kind of seems like a waste of time. However, with a digital version, of course there's no real excuse for that lag to happen. You should be able to get it on the day as soon as realistically you log into your own game and grab the copy. So here's what you need to know. We can break this down into different categories of the pre-order because there are physical and digital versions. You can actually go onto the PlayStation Store and already pre-order those. You can go into a physical store and pre-order the Steelbook, etc. So here's the differences. There are two overarching versions. There's the launch edition of the game and there's the 25th anniversary edition. And then within that, you've got a couple of options as to digital or physical. Now, with the launch edition, which is kind of the base model, if you will, you get 100,000 credits in the game, you get the Super GT Class Supra from 1997, the Porsche 917 Living Legend, and a stealth version of the Mazda RX Vision GT3 machine, which incidentally also nicely confirms that we do at least have a return to some degree of stealth cars, even if it's only that one. Now, that version of the game is available on the PS4 and the PS5, of course. PS4 is $60, PS5 is $70. You can upgrade from the PS4 to the PS5 for, as I mentioned in a previous video, another $10 on top if you start off with the PS4 version. And those are available in either physical or digital forms for those same prices. Of course, notwithstanding the upgrade. And incidentally, if you do choose to upgrade, you absolutely need to make sure that you have the compatible PlayStation consoles. So in other words, if you, for example, bought the launch edition PS4 disc and then wanted to upgrade to the PS5 version, well, if you don't have a disc tray in your PS5, you're going to have immediate issues. Now, moving on to the 25th anniversary edition, you get everything that that launch edition gets. So the 100 grand and the three cars, plus you get a country liveried version of the GR Yaris. You get 30 PSN avatars and you get the Gran Turismo 7 soundtrack in presumably some more music-based form, you know, as a, as a separate file, I guess. Presumably not within the game itself. And this one is available in two forms within that. You know, Polyphony making it nice and simple for us. The one is the Steelbook Edition, which, as you would expect, is the physical copy. With that one, you get an additional million credits. But then there's the Digital Deluxe Edition, and both of these are still within the 25th anniversary, the digital deluxe version actually comes with even more credits. Instead of a million, you get 1.5 million. Not exactly sure why they chose to make that choice. Maybe they are trying to encourage more digital downloads rather than making discs. And of course, for Polyphony, it would make sense, or uh, any publisher really, because if you have lower costs of making the discs and the boxes, well, of course, selling digital ones is simpler, quicker, and more efficient for them. Now, the Steelbook Edition is available with a PS5 disc and comes with a PS4 digital version. That's the one that you get a million credits with. The Digital Deluxe version, which is the 25th anniversary, but only digital, comes with the aforementioned 1.5 million credits, but that comes with PS4 and PS5 versions digitally only, and those are $90 a piece. So if you want the complete experience, with no postal lag, the maximum amount of credits, all of the additional day one extras from the music to the avatars to the cars, etc. And I believe something like a total of, it's got to be 1.6 million credits, I guess, with the 1.5 plus the existing 100 grand. Then you should go for the digital deluxe version of the 25th anniversary, which will set you back 
$90. You'll be able to download that. It should be release date, unless that rele release date changes, of course, with no kind of delivery or postal service lag. Honestly, that's probably the version I'm going to go for, because under normal circumstances, I don't buy special editions. Before I started my YouTube content, I never used to, because I just didn't care. Whereas now, any kind of leg up or advantage moving into the game to get progression going more quickly, well, of course, that is important, especially when it comes with, with exclusive stuff that I can review as well. So that will most likely be the one that I go for. As I said, you can already pre-order these if you want to. I would actually recommend probably pre-ordering the digital ones if you can, maybe even on the PS4 as well. So overall, that's it for what you need to know about the pre-orders. It could be a little bit complicated on the surface of things, but hopefully this has cleared it up for at least some people. And doubtless you can read more into this on Sony's own pre-ordering section or in the individual store, they'll give you details as well. Or you could just watch the video again if you wanted to and run through those details. But overall, that's it for this update on the pre-order. Of course, as I've said before, be sure to stick around for plenty more Gran Turismo 7 content, coverage and news as it drops. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.